so much for joining me this afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. I was reading through your biography and it struck me that you are almost a kind of a cancer detective. <laughs> and I wanted to know how you use big data to inform your work. Sure. So we view big data in sort of various forms, um, shapes and sizes, and we're really interested in um, sort of two angles to this. One is taking the wealth of omic data, and by that I mean genomic, transcriptomic, proteomic, metabolomic. <laughs> Think of all the ohms we can capture. That's a lot of ohms. <laughs> a lot of ohms. Yeah. All the ohms we can currently measure, and really integrating the diverse signals we can capture mm -hmm. across those data sets to try and understand how we can better um, classify patients and understand what their prognoses are, as well as what therapies they may or may not respond to. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, we want to do this across lots of patients because we really need those sample sizes to understand um, how better to stratify patients. Mm -hmm. um, but we're, we have other angles as well that we pursue where we like to go very deep into okay. an individual patient and understand the heterogeneity there. So I guess that's my question. What's mm -hmm. the end game here? Is mm -hmm. the idea that you'll meet a patient with cancer, sample their cancer, and use other patients' data to determine the best way to treat it? On some level, um, you know, I think what we're increasingly finding is that each patient's tumor is incredibly diverse, mm -hmm. and this heterogeneity within an individual, we've already known for a long time that different patients exhibit heterogeneity, but the finding that different cells within a tumor are so heterogeneous um, has really caused us to rethink how we might go about sampling these patients and how we study them, and whether we can leverage that heterogeneity as a way to understand the future behavior of that tumor in a given patient. I'm sort of surprised to hear you say that, that the cells within a, a tumor are heterogeneous or different because we think mm -hmm. of tumors as a collection of cells that are clonal or the same. Can yes. you explain that? Sure. Um, so that has been sort of a long-standing dogma in the field um, that there is clonality there and that, that tumors are monoclonal in origin and, and maybe that they share a, the common set of variants. Mm. Um, but what we can show and what my group has been very involved in as well as many others is, uh, you know, if we sample different regions of the tumor or we sample individual cells from the tumor and then profile them, sequence their genomes, for example, or measure their transcriptomes, we see that, in fact, they're not identical. That's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so and, and maybe we shouldn't be surprised by that diversity. I think we can also exploit it. So some of the questions that are outstanding in the field are, is that diversity functional? Does it matter? Because if you can classify different regions of the same tumor into different subtypes, how do we treat that patient? So does it, so does it matter? But moreover, can we leverage those patterns of heterogeneity, sort of as diversity, to understand how the tumor became what it is today? How did it evolve? And what is it going to do you know, in terms of its future trajectory? And so we're very interested in applying computational tools to dissect these data and statistical approaches to model the behavior of these cells. And when can we expect to see that actually at the bedside or in clinical practice? That's a fabulous question. <laughs> um, you know, I think the path between the, the research side and the, the actual patient bedside is often a slow one. I do think that things are moving at such an accelerated pace now, really due to a confluence of technologies, um, both genome sequencing, but also on the computational machinery side. And so I think that we are moving rapidly, but it will be some time, a few okay. years, before we're really rolling these kinds of approaches out. And I think, you know, the, the challenge is scaling up. We have to start testing this in many, in a much larger population, mm -hmm. right? And trying to understand what are the factors that are actually predictive of, of progression. That's where big data might come in. That's where big data comes in. Yeah, oh, well, thank you for this glimpse into the future of uh, cancer diagnostics and treatment.